I'd like to welcome you all to the webinar on the National Library of Medicine for Non-Medical Librarians. I'm Jessica Philippe from the South Central Regional Library Council, and we have two presenters joining us today. We have Michelle Berta, who is the Education and Health Literacy Coordinator for the NNLM Mid-Atlantic Region, and Erin Latta, who is the NNLM Dockline Coordinator. So thank you both for being here, and welcome to Michelle, who is up first. Okay, thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Michelle Berta and I'm from the NNLMR region. Uh, this is a picture of our staff and I'm the one in the middle, uh, back row in the middle where the two T's sort of come together for Pitt, that's me. For those of you who are unfamiliar um, with NLM and, uh, and our program NNLM, um, I'm going to give you a brief introduction. So the National Library of Medicine um, is the world's largest biomedical library, and it provides a vast print collection, and we produce over 150 electronic information resources on a wide range of topics that are searched by um, billions of people um, throughout the year. And one of the things that probably most of you are familiar with um, PubMed, but as I said, we're much, much more than PubMed. NOM also began um, producing consumer health information in the 90s, and we continue to do so, and we continue to um, provide and develop other databases and websites. The person that you see in the center here, this picture of this woman, is Patricia Brennan. She's the director of NLM, and I, I always like to say, give her a brief introduction and tell you a little bit about her. Um, she is the first woman who has been uh, the director of NLM, and also she's a nurse. She was a practicing clinical nurse, and so now she's leading the National Library of Medicine and also um, some of the initiatives that you'll see in the coming years. In addition, NOM coordinates um, a 6,500 member National Network Libraries of Medicine that, you'll, that I'll refer to as NNLM. And we provide and promote access to health information in communities across the United States. MAR is Region 1, and which includes the states of New York, New Jersey, Delaware, and Pennsylvania. And our mission is to advance the progress of medicine and improve the public health by providing all U.S. health professionals with equal access to biomedical information and improving the public's access to information to enable them to make informed decisions about their health. So that is our mission. Our membership is free, and we also provide um, in-person trainings and online trainings as I'm doing today. If you want to know about more about us and our programs, I have links here for you to NNLM um, in general and NNLMR, and also some of the resource guides that we produce. I'd also like to take this time to ask you, please, if you've not done so, to review and update your membership organization um, information. And if you don't, aren't a member, that I hope that you'll consider becoming a member. And the certificates um, will be sent out to you after your membership is updated. Now let's look at some of the NLM resources that I have uh, chosen for you today. I, we don't have a whole lot of time, so I've just picked out three that I think are um, probably provide you with the most diverse information. And these, these resources that I've chosen, I would say they're more really like portals than they are just a website because they draw um, information and aggregate information from other government agencies and departments and external organizations and associations. And one of my favorites that I'm going to talk about today is Medline Plus. Um, which provides information for consumers and also healthcare professionals who are looking for patient ed and teaching materials. 
Then we have SIS, the Specialized Information Services, which I'll talk about next. And that, again, is a division within NLM, provides environmental health and toxicology information. That they also produce our drug information portal and outreach. And the last one um, is Disaster Health Information, which is also called DIMRIC, and it stands for Disaster Information Management Resource Center. And I'll uh, show you a few things that you'll find there. So the first one I'd like to look at is SIS, and this is the home page. And um, I always say that it's probably one of the best kept secrets of NOM. You may be familiar with its resources, but not really know it as a department itself. There are six main areas of information within SIS, and what they produce, one of the areas is environmental, health, and toxicology information. They produce chemical and drug information, HIV AIDS, outreach activities and resources, which we're going to look at next, and as I told you about disaster health information, which, come, which comes from the Disaster Information Management Research Center, or DIMRIC. And then we also, um, SIS produces the K through 12 science and health information education resources. Now, if I were to click on the outreach tab that was the, on the second row to the left, this is what the page would look like. And I'll give you a minute just to see how vast and how many areas and how much information is found there for uh, specific populations. What I'd like to do next from this page is I'm going to click on the multicultural resources for health information. And this is what the page would look like. Again, you can see multiple um, areas for you to explore. And within each of these topic areas is a multitude of, of more uh, links and resources to, to other information. For one, for instance, here's cultural competency. If I click on that, that takes me to probably 20 other resources. We have um, the refugee and health portals, and we also have health resources in multiple languages. So um, because of limited time today, we can't explore all those, but I would really highly recommend that you look at those, take some time and look at those. If I go back to the SIS page and do a search, I, I chose carbon monoxide because that's a, a problem um, during the winter months. And if I chose, if I search carbon monoxide, one of the um, links would go to this page called Toxtown. And Toxtown is another um, uh, resource developed by SIS. And they focus on environmental health. And you can go through various neighborhoods and find out, find out what may be hazardous to your health or search a particular topic, as I've done here, carbon monoxide. And as I said, with winter upon us, um, this is a good resource for consumer or middle to high school age children, but adults like it too. So when I searched carbon monoxide in Toxtown and clicked on that link, this is what I found. So it gives you a very nice description. It always explains what carbon monoxide is. And then there are more links for you to search further and get more information from um, other government agencies. There's carbon monoxide poisoning information from the CDC. There's one information from OSHA, um, EPA. And then also, you see the little figures down below, and these are locations where carbon monoxide may be found. And I just wanted to give you an idea, too. If I would click on the um, link to the K-12 through science and, and health educators um, information, here, this is a, a particular app that I found. So if you're doing outreach or you need program ideas, this is an excellent resource. And as I said, this little app here, it's called Run for Green. 
and it was developed by NLM, and it's a game for K-12 students to explore topics of environmental conversa uh, conservation. And here are a few screenshots. Now this is the DIMRIC site, and you can see all the links and, and topics that can be found here. Um, in January, particularly January 10th, I'm going to be doing a class on disaster health information. Um, it's going to be geared for, um, I would say, more for consumers and what you'd find on this site for consumers. And I'm going to look at and address specific population and audiences that um, may need help during disasters. And one of the things that I have here, I pointed out, is coping with disasters. And if I would click on that link, this is what the page looks like. And you can see the arrow is pointing toward information for the public. And also there are um, resource, resources in multiple languages. And over to the far right, you'll see the Disaster Distress Helpline, which is a 1-800 number. It's available 24-7. Um, so if people are having problems, um, experiencing, you know, especially families who are experiencing uh, disaster or caregivers who may need someone who needs help. This is an excellent resource and there's also the resources available for deaf or hard of hearing and also Spanish speakers. Now one of the most popular and I feel the most important resources is Medline Plus. Again, this was produced by the National Institutes of Health. This is for patients and their families and friends. It's reliable, up-to-date health information anytime, anywhere, for free. And also now it's available um, on any device. As I mentioned earlier, health professionals and consumers alike um, depend on it for information that is authoritative, up-to-date, there are over 1,000 topics. We started out with 22 in 1998, and at the present time we have 1,000 topics on diseases and health conditions. Information is available um, from various organizations outside of the government, and we have over 35,000 links. As I said, it's um, a responsive website now. It's not the Medline Plus of old, so depending on the device that you're working on, um, it'll adapt to that device. And here are some screenshots. What I've been telling people, the way I'd like to promote Medline Plus is to tell you to Google Pen Medline Plus, since we're all, um, that's a term that we use now, Google, as a verb. So I think, um, What's been helpful is for people to remember Medline Plus by Googling it. And this is what the um, home page looks like. All pages are formatted this way. We have our health topics on one side. We tried to make them very large and clear. You have your drug information and supplements, videos and tools. In the center is today's health news. So whatever you're hearing on the radio or TV, um, this is where you can find that information. And then we also have the Medline Plus magazine that's available that you can order in bulk for your library or for your organization. And what I want to do next is I had looked at a topic within Medline Plus. There's a topic winter health, winter weather emergencies. This is what the page would look like. And you can see the related topics, frostbite, hypothermia. And also I want to point out, see the box on the right-hand side that says languages? So you have um, this type of information that's available in Arabic, um, Bosnian, and also Somali and Spanish. Not every topic, not all 1,000 topics are available in all languages. But when you click on the topic, as I said, you can see on that far right-hand side tells you what languages that this topic is available in. And I just want to point out, too, the NOM drug information portal. 
and you can see the NOM resources there. The consumer health drug information um, will be found on Medline Plus. And you have toxicology information, which is available on ToxNet. You have the clinical trials, um, HIV, and approved. You can get your package inserts. And then you have the search box on the side. And I'm going to end now with the benefits of being an NNLM membership, being a, a member. Um, again, I invite you all, if you're not members, to become a member. Uh, one of the big things that's important to a lot of people is funding. We have um, our, funding our funding period, our, our second round of funding period has ended, but we'll be calling for applications again uh, mid-February to end of February, and these are the areas of um, funding that are available. We have funding for health literacy projects, emergency preparedness, uh, professional development up to $2,000, uh, health information awareness, that's a $5,000 award. So if you want to know more about funding and awards, just let me know. And also, this is just a snippet of all the different resources we have. Training is available, as I said, online and in person. And um, also, we have some great program ideas and toolkits that can help you developing um, programs and outreach. So I'm going to end now, and I believe we're going to hold our questions to the end. And again, here's my contact information. This is who I am, my phone number, and email. And now we're going to turn it over to Erin. Thank you all. Thanks, Michelle. And you can feel free to type in questions as we go along, and then both Erin and Michelle will take some time to answer questions at the end. Hi, everybody. Hopefully you can see my screen here, my welcome screen, and I will have to ask, stop and ask and make sure everyone can hear me okay and can see my screen all right. I'll take your silence as a yes. <laughs> um, so welcome to DocLine and Lonesome Doc for non-medical librarians. I am Erin Lada, your DocLine coordinator. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, I'll take it from here and I'm going to introduce you all to my specialty, DocLine. This adorable little pup you see is, of course, the world famous Tugger. <laughs> okay, so maybe he's not world famous, but in the DocLine world, he is quite a celebrity. We'll see a lot of Tugger from now on. Um, so historically, the user group for DocLine was librarians with very specialized knowledge. Now, some users are library clerks, students, and even continuing medical education coordinators. So really, it could be anyone using DocLine now. Um, next, let's see. So DocLine is the preferred method of routing requests to the NLM. I am here at the National DocLine Coordination Office at the University of Maryland, Baltimore Health Sciences and Human Services Library in the beautiful Inner Harbor area of Baltimore City, not far from everybody in New York. Uh, I am a national office, so it doesn't matter where I am. I serve everyone in the nation uh, in terms of DocLine and Lonesome Doc. Um, as I said, I'm going to talk briefly about DocLine and Lonesome Doc. Uh, on your right there, you see the login screen for DocLine and the ever ubiquitous Tugger, of course, and our little security notice. But I'm going to talk about DocLine, what it is, what it does, how it works, and why it works. I'm going to uh, touch briefly on our, how membership relates to that. Uh, Michelle covered sort of membership and what it entails. I'm going to talk about yesterday, today, and tomorrow, and Lonesome Doc. Um, so a little bit of history. Um, uh, that was the DocLine office. Now I want to tell you a little bit about DocLine itself. Um, it is, as I said, the NLM's, NNLM's ILL system in brief. Um, it, it was driven by the needs of the network. Uh, it came about in 1985, and it's been around ever since. 1991, Lonesome Doc was launched. Um, so to get started with DocLine and Lonesome Doc, really, health science libraries and any library at an institution where there is a health sciences mission are el eligible to apply for access to DocLine. It's uh, 
No, so libraries are no longer required to join the NNLM to be eligible for eligible for DocLine, uh, nor vice versa. You no longer have to be in DocLine to be a member of the network. As I said, I'm here in the office in Baltimore from uh, 8.30 to 5, Monday through Friday. This is a picture of the outgoing DocLine coordinator. Her name is Ashley Cuffia, and luckily for me, she moved right next door. So uh, a brief uh, interlude about the office here. I began working here in February this year. Ashley as I said, was my predecessor and, in fact, the inaugurator of the national office. Once upon a time, there were eight regional DocLine coordinators, one for each of the regions, but at the beginning of our new co-op, cooperative agreement, there was a consolidation of those regional offices into one national office. So Ashley was here for, I think, nine months before handing over the reins to me. As I said, I've been here since February of this year. And uh, here in the office, I offer training and day-to-day -day support. Um, so one of the things that Ashley did when she first started at the national office was to devise this document delivery and interlibrary loan plan for the National Network of Libraries of Medicine. So in it, she outlined the description, objectives, and responsibilities of each of the players in the DocLine arena. So that would be me, you, the NLM, the NNLM, and uh, um, that plan can be found on our website. Some of the requirements of DocLine participation are very simple. We asked for uh, 20 biomedical serials. Uh, current. Uh, we ask that they are maintained at least annually for accuracy. We also ask that you deliver via PDF and that you reciprocate, that we are lending. So, and also participate as able in the ele electronic fund transfer system, which I will explain later. Um, let me tell you a little bit more about CERHOL. It's the National Library of Medicine's database of machine-readable serial holdings. So it's basically all of the holdings statements of all of the network members and they are linked back to the NLM's bibliographic data in Locator Plus. So currently there's, uh, I'm not even sure, over a million uh, holding statements in there. So um, serial holdings contain the holdings data, as I said, for all of the medical libraries that participate in DocLine. So in your serial holdings, you can add, update, and delete holdings, and you can also search other libraries' holdings information, which is uh, very handy. It's an interlibrary loan system, as I said, so it, holdings reported within DocLine are only for serials that libraries can provide interlibrary loan service with. Um, access to the NLM's collection is typically made through either DocLine or Lonesome Doc, uh, as I think I said earlier, DocLine is the preferred method of routing requests to the NLM, but you can go into the Locator Plus, uh, that's the NLM's free OPAC, and we also have available the NLM catalog, which uh, provides sort of alternative free search interface. It looks, it's very um, similar, similar ha, I knew I'd have trouble with it, similarly formatted as PubMed. So it'll look familiar if you're at all familiar with PubMed. Uh, so now I will show you a really cursory look at borrowing and lending within DocLine so you can just see how easy it is. It's very simple. It should look probably very familiar to anyone who's done any type of ILL. So borrowing in DocLine can be done several ways, but the easiest, I think, and most reliable way to retrieve citations in DocLine is through using the PubMed ID. So that PMID here on the screen, you'll see this is a screenshot of our DocLine system, when you go in and click on request, you can enter several, um, there are several ways you can enter information that you're looking for. Um, as I said, PubMed is one of the ways. You can use the unique key here, as you see, this is what it defaults to, and in there you can enter up to, I forget how many, 10 to 15 PubMed IDs all at once, and you can pull them all up at once and decide which to process, and if you don't need to process them otherwise. You can also search in this box here, you'll see a PubMed button. You can click on that. It will take you to a framed in version of PubMed within DocLine. So you would use, it would look just like PubMed, but it's actually framed into DocLine. And so once you have made uh, all your choices, it will take you right back to DocLine where you were, you know, missing beat. Um, there are other ways to do it, but PubMed ID is the easiest and most reliable, as I said. So PubMed Central, 
is a free full text archive of biomedical and life sciences journal literature in the NNLM, and I, I'm sorry, the NLM. Uh, in addition to its role as an archive, a great value of PubMed Central lies in its capacity to store um, and cross-reference data from several diverse sources. Uh, as you can see here, it is full for free full text digital archive of biomedical and life sciences journal literature it contains more than three million articles reaching back over two centuries as you can see now um, 4.6 million articles are archived in the PubMed Central uh, speaking of free uh, if you are a fan of free things as I am you might be excited to hear about our um, free reciprocal ILL group called free share if you are a member of Docline, you can choose to become a member of the free share library group which serves um, almost half of our I think 2400 member li or 2100 member libraries uh, as I said it's a free reciprocal group where the members share resources with one another for free so it's very handy uh, I think I Everyone should join Free Share if they're in Dockline. A lending, this is what some of our lending looks like in Dockline. It's, as I said, very easy. You receive a notification of a request. You have one day to receipt a normal request, and to receipt it means simply that you're acknowledging that you've seen it and you intend to work on it. Once receipted, though, you have three days to update it. And once you've pulled and scanned or other, otherwise located and processed the particular article, you come back to Docline, you choose the action, so either filled or not filled, and then how it was filled or why it was not filled. Um, now, on to, as I, said, as I said, this is all very brief overview. I know I'm moving very quickly through this, but I want, uh, I want you all to know that I'm here in the office all the time, and I'm here almost exclusively to answer your questions. So forgive me for my speedy tour through Dockline. I'm not done yet, but um, I know I'm moving fast, but there's a lot to consider, but I'm always here to answer questions. Um, I want to move on to our EFTS. It's the Electronic Fund Transfer System, as I explained earlier. It is the billing component of Dockline. I'm going to be very brief on this. It's just a great service that's very handy. Currently, the Health Sciences and Human Services Library at the University of Maryland, Baltimore, where I'm located, is actually offering some starter awards for the electronic funds transfer system. So we have uh, $200 awards that are being given out on a first come, first served basis. So if you're at all interested in Dockline or, and the electronic funds transfer system, there's a great opportunity there for you. Please email me. I'll answer any questions you have about that. So that was, I've talked about a little bit about the past and a little bit about the present, but what is in store for Docline's tomorrow and our Lonesome Doc services? So, NLM's web-based products and services are all moving to a new web-based platform over the next few years. So, the Docline team at the NLM is will be completely redesigning and recoding Docline. Don't worry, there will be no dis disruption during that process, but we are moving away from using library-specific terms. Um, which is a nice thing. Uh, so s instead of calling serials serials, we'll call them journals, as most people know them as journals. Um, the redesign will also give the electronic journals and electronic delivery more prominence. So we'll be using less print-centric language. Uh, many things have changed since the system was rolled out in 1985. <laughs> and that was when libraries were mailing photocopies instead of delivering PDFs from their online journal collection via email. So it's going to be an agile design process. It'll be iterative. You'll start seeing new designs soon. And like I said, there should be no dis disruption, and it should all go very smoothly. But it should be a wonderful improvement. Um, so I'm moving very quickly. But as I begin to wrap this up, I want to tell you where you can find some help if you are using Docline. We, of course, have. If you have technical questions, the place to go is not me. <laughs> it would be straight to the NLM folks. If you have questions that are, um, you know, technical problems, issues with system performance, if you're getting error messages or pages aren't loading, technical help is there for you at the NLM. You can go to the website and 
contact them using that. You can always use the customer support that we have from Dockline, within Dockline, you can click right on our customer support home or our user guide to help you using it. I'm sorry, I'm going backwards now, that would be bad. So follow us on Twitter. This is where you'll find updates about Tugger and customer support, service notices. And finally, I want to leave you with another version of Tugger. And I also want to show you some stats. now. I'm told everyone loves stats, so these are our monthly activity summary stats. The numbers you see here are University of Maryland Baltimore's, but as you can also see as compared to the entire Dockline system. Um, I think I've missed some slides, so give me a second, because I had some information for you all about Lonesome Dog, and I feel like we skipped right by that, or it didn't ever show up. So I don't know where those slides ended up. <laughs> But let me tell you a little bit about Lonesome Dog. So Lonesome Dog is sort of, we have this mission, as I was talking about, with uh, these requirements for Dockline participation. Um, let me pull that slide up for you. And really, there are some strict requirements, as you can see here. Not all of you, I understand, will have 20 biomedical cereals for which to share. Um, so what we do offer is this Lonesome Doc service, and it looks like that slide was hidden, and that's why you didn't see it. So let me see if this will, there it is, how great. So Lonesome Doc is, so I heard, you heard Michelle talk about it, and I also mentioned briefly the NLM, NNLM's mission to provide health professionals with equal access to biomedical information. Now, this mission includes providing professional library services to unaffiliated health professionals. So those professionals that are not served by health sciences libraries or by health sciences libraries within their hospital or clinic. Lonesome Doc also serves the public. So Lonesome Doc is, can be offered by libraries, libraries who participate in the Docline system. Each ordering library that chooses to offer Lonesome Doc service sets its own policies and fees. So some uh, serve local affiliated members only, while others will serve the public as well. Each library that chooses to offer Lonesome Doc services sets its own policies and fees, including to whom they offer service. So, uh, and whether they recall, require pre-approval or prior contact or deposit or accounts when using, before registering for Lonesome Doc. So Lonesome Doc requests arrive in Dockline, and if the library cannot fill them, some, not all, but some Lonesome Doc providers use the Lonesome Doc transfer function within Dockline. So that would in, turn them into regular interlibrary loan requests. So let me say that again. If you are serving as a Lonesome Doc library, you can either fill exclusively from your own collection, so you would serve uh, what you have in your holdings, um, while an, another option would be to then, if you don't hold that, then turn it into a dock line, so into a regular interlibrary loan request between two libraries. So, and then once the library, once the request becomes an ILL request, then of course the borrowing library is responsible for copyright compliance and things like that. So, as I said, some serve only affiliated members, but you can each library chooses what they will share. I mean, and the services they'll offer and the prices they will charge for those services. Um, we do have a lot of consortium participation in Lonesome Doc. Um, it's such a great service and it can really sort of widen the, the scope of your collection. Um, a little bit more about Lonesome Doc ordering. So also, alternatively, if your library cannot serve as a Dockline library, if it finds it's not able to fulfill the criteria for participation in Dockline, so those 20 serials, um, the lending uh, delivery via PDF, all of those things, if, if you cannot fulfill those, we do offer the Lonesome Doc service. It's connecting, so it connects those seeking full text articles indexed in PubMed with libraries who can fill those requests. So it was designed to allow professionals to order articles from a list of citations retrie retrieved from PubMed. So it's very simple. You go into PubMed and you 
find what you're looking for and it allows you to process it directly through Lonesome Doc. It is individual library users and they request the journal articles by themselves. It's user initiated without mediation by library staff. So the request is sent digitally to a library which supplies the article through DocLine. Articles fulfilled through the system are sent directly to the Lonesome Doc patron. Um, and I think that covers it. There were some other slides that were hidden, but I don't think they were really that necessary. That's probably why I hid them in the first place. Um, but I did want to make sure that I covered Lonesome Doc because I think that's a terrific alternative to DocLine. As I said, there's something for everybody here. Either DocLine, if you've got holdings to share and lend and send via PDF. If you don't have a collection, don't worry. We have Lonesome Doc, where if you are looking, if you have biomedical literature needs we have Lonesome Doc as a way to serve you so that's about my time we're going to take questions soon I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to meet myself and I'm going to answer all the questions that any of you have thanks Erin Thank so yeah if there are questions for either Erin or Michelle go ahead and type them into the chat box and Mary Carol had asked if there were marketing materials available in multiple languages, and Michelle had shared that, um, at least for Medline Plus, there's Spanish bookmark and web page materials. So I'll give people just a minute to see if there are any other questions out there. I'm not seeing anybody type anything in. But thanks to both of you. I think that gives a good overview of just the tip of the iceberg of how many resources the NLM has to offer. Okay, well, if there are no questions, um, I'd like to thank everybody for coming. We'll be sending out a recording of this presentation. And if you have any questions, I guess you can feel free to follow up with Erin or Michelle. So thanks again, everyone.